saw the question online, what is the name of CH3OCH2CH3? To do this question, you're going to have to identify that CH3s are terminal groups, like they're at the end of a molecule. Put another way, each carbon can have four bonds, and if three of them are taken up with hydrogen, that carbon can only make one more bond to something else. CH2s are generally linking groups, since carbon can form four bonds and two of them are taken up by hydrogens. That means that that carbon can be bonded twice more, one to the left and one to the right, at least as we write our formulas. What I mean by that is that the CH3 at the beginning is going to be written as so, and that carbon has to be bonded to something else. The CH3 on the right will be built the same way. That carbon has three bonds to hydrogens, and then that carbon has to be bonded to something. It's going to have to be a CH2 because that's what's next in the formula. So I'm going to draw that carbon. It was connected to two other hydrogens, and that carbon has to be connected to something. Now this oxygen, you'll have to know that oxygen generally has two bonds in these organic compounds. Oxygen can have a single bond if there's a negative charge on it, or you can have three bonds if it's carbon monoxide, or if there's some kind of complicated resonance structure. In a neutral compound, you're probably not going to have that. Oxygen needs two bonds. Now you need one to go to this carbon and one to go to that carbon, so it should make sense that that oxygen sits straight in the middle. Great, we drew it, capiche. Now, how do you name this? Because we have a single bonded oxygen in the middle, it means we have what's called an ether. Now there's a bunch of outdated ways of naming this. I'm gonna give you the official name first. You find the longest carbon chain, which in this case is two carbons long. That's going to give you the root of your name. This is an ethane. And then you have a methyl group, methyl being short for one carbon, and it is connected to the chain via an oxygen. We're going to use the meth from methyl, but instead of YL, meaning that the methyl would have been a, a substituent. We have to show that it's connected via the oxygen, and so it becomes methoxyethane. Some teachers will argue that you need to tell people where on the chain that methoxy group is. And by the way, this is the methoxy group itself, the OCH3. But in a molecule as small as ethane, if you connect to this carbon, all of a sudden it has to be carbon one. If you connect it to that carbon, then that carbon's carbon number one in the chain. So you don't need the number here because it's not ambiguous about where that oxygen is. It's connected to one of the carbons and it's automatically carbon one in the chain. Done. As soon as you get to propane, methoxypropane, you're gonna have to tell people if it's on carbon one, like the end carbon, or carbon two, the middle one. Cool. Now some teachers are going to give you outdated naming for this. Some of them are going to tell you that you can name each of the two substituents separately. This is an ethyl group. This is a methyl group. And then the fact that it's an ether means you get to just crank the word ether down on the end there. This used to be an okay name, but it's no longer the IUPAC name. It's the way it goes. Some teachers will even switch these around because they're under the mistaken impression that you're supposed to go from like shortest to longest. Don't get me started on that. What can you do? The official name of this is methoxyethane because you have a methoxy group attached to what was an ethane. Dunzo. Hey, best of luck to you.